Larry Anglosano here at New England Air Museum in Northern Connecticut. Man, what a hidden gem this place is. And if you haven't been to New England Air Museum, it's up at Bradley International Airport. That's BDL in Connecticut. And if you haven't been here in a while or haven't been here at all, you really need to come because there's some really interesting new exhibits and some meticulously restored old airplanes. And if you're a member of the local flying community, now you really need to come because the museum has invested big in a Redbird FMX motion flight simulator. Learn more about it. Let's go find Bob Stangerone. I'm Bob Stangerone. I'm uh, president and chairman of the New England Air Museum. And this is our Redbird FMX simulator. It's a full motion simulator, which means it'll simulate flight based on control inputs. We have uh, three levels of motion. We have pitch, which is 50 degrees, roll, which is 40 degrees, and yaw, which is 60 degrees. And together they give the real sensation of flying uh, for, for the uh, operator. A real benefit of this simulator is the visual aspect of it. It's 200 degrees of panorama, so there are great advantages in, in having that. For instance, uh, you could see when you're on downwind to the runway. You could do maneuvers like turn around a point uh, or emergency landings, which are uh, more uh, are riskier in an airplane than, than in a simulator. The simulator is much more efficient uh, from a time standpoint and financially as well. Uh, from a time standpoint, you don't have the time you have in an airplane for startup, taxi, takeoff, climb out, uh, dealing with traffic, uh, and then cruising to your practice area. This, you get in and you can program exactly where you want to be at a point in space. You could put it at one of hundreds of airports around the world, or you could put it in the air. You could start it uh, on a downwind approach. You could start it on an instrument approach from five miles out, from 10 miles out. So it's very efficient learning. Uh, financially, it makes sense because it's a fraction of what an airplane would cost to operate. So we, we expect pilots to be able to use this uh, for recurrent proficiency training, instrument training, and as well as uh, for maneuvers. Uh, you, can, you can do departure stalls and, and other higher risk stalls in the simulator that might be a little bit more dicey in the, uh, in the airplane. Well, first of all, we're tremendously grateful to the Ray Foundation for providing the grant that allowed us to, to purchase this. I, we couldn't do this without them. So we see a great advantage to being able to provide discovery flights for young people and older people as well. The other application for it is for pilots in the area who want to maintain their currency, whether it be instrument currency or just uh, review their, their skills. And uh, again, it, this can do almost anything the airplane can do except leave the ground. But it does it in a safer environment and a much more efficient environment. Uh, so we plan to rent this out to area pilots. Uh, we're collaborating with the EAA uh, and to allow their members to use it at a discount. Uh, we're collaborating with a local flight school to let their students use it uh, for their flight training. So we think it'll have a lot of different uses. And then when we have events, we have uh, in non-COVID times, we have events, birthday parties, weddings, and that sort of thing. So this fits into our museum mission in several ways. It, uh, it helps us to inspire and to educate young people. Uh, and think about the, the older generations, people in assisted living facilities. I mean, if, they, if they're mobile enough, they can come and get out of that, that locked in uh, situation and we could fly them to Las Vegas or we can fly them to the Rocky Mountains. The beauty is you can put this anywhere in the world. You could fly around the Eiffel Tower. So it's a nice escape for even people who don't get out much. We have uh, quite a few new things going on at the museum here. In addition to the Redbird, we have two new exhibits coming online. We have uh, a new command exhibit, which uses high technology, holograph technology. We have uh, New England women in aviation coming up soon. We have the Polish squadron uh, that fought in the Battle of Britain. That one will be coming up later this year. So there's always something new happening here. Uh, if anyone wants to know more information, uh, they can go to our website, it's neam.org, and you'll get all the information on there.